Hello everybody, greetings once again from Chennai in South India. Today I am going to talk about drugs precipitating, provoking or perpetuating psoriasis. Psoriasis is uh, one of the common dermatoses in clinical practice. It is a chronic, systemic, inflammatory disease with a worldwide prevalence. It was originally thought to be only skin deep, so much so. The Italians labeled it as morbus fortiorum, which means a disease of the strong. But today it is considered to be or belong to the group of metabolic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, obesity and so on. Though there are many drugs now available to manage psoriasis, there are times when nothing seems to work. Indeed, some of the standard anti-psoriatic drugs may worsen psoriasis. So much so, a wag once labeled psoriasis as an antidote to a dermatologist's ego. With the introduction of newer drugs in medical therapeutics and cornucopian profusion, there are times when a few of these drugs could worsen psoriasis. Unfortunately, many doctors are not willing to accept the fact that the drug prescribed by them for, say, a beta blocker for hypertension had worsened the patient's psoriasis. But when in doubt, it is safer to withdraw the suspect drug for a short period and see its effect on the clinical course of psoriasis. About two decades ago, an article published in the IJD from South India discussed the role of drugs in the induction of psoriasis and their modes of action in worsening psoriasis. Many a time, this observation is based on circumstantial evidence. But there are three groups of drugs which are clearly related to psoriasis provocation. One, the beta blockers. Two, lithium. And three, systemic anti-malarials. We call that SAM. As we all know, beta blockers are mainly used for cardiac conditions. Not only can it exacerbate psoriasis, it can cause lichenoid dermatitis. The latency period ranges between several days to 12 months. Even topical beta blockers like Timolol, which is used for glaucoma, has been known to worsen psoriasis. At times, plaque psoriasis has become pustular psoriasis in patients started on beta block. Now, what is the mechanism of action? The basic pathogenetic factor in psoriasis is hyperproliferation of epidermal cells. Beta blockers reduce the level of cyclic AMP inside the cell, which in turn decreases intracellular calcium level, leading to increase in cellular proliferation. Next is lithium. This is used extensively in psychiatric and urological conditions. The latency between lithium and the exacerbation of psoriasis is very long, on an average 20 weeks. Lithium can provoke psoriasis at the cellular and at the molecular levels. At the molecular level, the action is similar to beta blockers. At the cellular level, lithium has mitogenic properties and blocks cellular differentiation. Next is systemic antimalarials, we call it SAM. Both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are known to worsen psoriasis. There are three clinical situations where antimalarials are used in psoriasis. One is when it's associated with arthropathy. Two, when there is a coexistent discoid lupus. And three, when psoriatics are traveling to malaria endemic areas. Mechanism of action? The chemical structure of antimalarials is similar to danzylputrazine, which is a potent transglutamase inhibitor. And this enzyme plays an important role in the epidermal proliferation of psoriasis. Next is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Unlike the first three drugs we have discussed just now, the association between psoriasis, flare and NSAIDs is not very robust. Mechanism of action, arachidonic acid can metabolize to either prostaglandins or to leukotriene. NSAIDs block this pathway resulting in accumulation of leukotrienes, which aggravate psoriasis. Many, many other drugs have been implicated in provoking psoriasis. To mention a few antibiotics, including tetracyclines, ACE inhibitors, and other cardiac drugs. Besides lithium, other psychotropic drugs like olanzapine, all these are recorded to 
was in psoriasis. Sudden withdrawal of corticosteroids is known to precipitate erythroderma in psoriasis. Interestingly, many topical drugs such as coal tar, anthraline, narrowband UVB phototherapy, when these are used in active psoriasis, can push the psoriasis into the erythrodermic or pustular phases. In recent times, with the introduction of biologics in therapeutics, a new type of psoriasis has appeared on the scene. It is especially reported with a few of the TNF-alpha blockers. These drugs, when used to treat extensive psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, hydradenitis suppurativa, or inflammatory bowel disease, in some cases, these drugs induce a psoriasiform dermatosis. The histology of this rash shows a combination of psoriasis and eczema in that you've got hyperproliferation of epidermal cells and at the same time spongiosis, which is a hallmark of eczema. This drug-induced psoriasis is called paradoxical psoriasis. So there are many drugs reported to provoke or exacerbate psoriasis. In some instances, such flares may be coincidental and not causal. A better understanding of the mechanisms involved in drug-induced exacerbation may help to elucidate the amorphogenesis of this enigmatic disease. Because psoriasis is such an un unpredictable and complex disease, clinical studies and prognostication may be at times very, very difficult. That is why, as I mentioned earlier, psoriasis is an antidote to a dermatologist's ego. Thank you.